Are you ready to risk your life on a daily basis? The new Hydro Archon is here to maybe change the meta. I will explain everything you need to know about their builds and teams. I'm so in love with their design and personality and thanks to MiHoYo for allowing me on the media server where I got to play and test her early and spent so much time studying her kit. Anyway, let's start. Furina is a 5-star Hydroid Sword user. She's aligned with both Uja and Numa Arke, and she can change between them using a charger attack. Her elemental skill will summon sea creatures that help in battle, and change depending on the alignment. If Uja aligned, an octopus, a seahorse and a crab will be summoned. They will stay on field and deal hydro damage. The Numa alignment instead will have a singer of many waters, which will stay on field and heal instead. Furina can change between her damaging trio and solo healer even after summoning them. You can also tell her current Arke by her looks. She has a darker dress and short hair during Uja, and long hair, light colors during Numa. Moving forward, I will refer to the trio for the damage dealing summons and solo for the healing one. Also keep in mind that all their important scalings are from HP. This trio is going to be the go-to usage for Furina teams. It not only does a lot of damage while also applying a decent amount of Hydro, but it also drains the team HP with each of their attacks, and as we will see in a moment, that is not a bad thing. The skill has a 20 seconds cooldown and a 30 seconds duration. Their HP consumption is fixed and doesn't scale with levels. In those 20 seconds, assuming everything hits, they will have consumed 50% HP from each party member. Why do they consume HP though? That is to better enable the main feature of her kit, her elemental burst, let the people rejoice. This burst will deal AoE hydro damage on cast, and for its duration it will track how much the HP of every party member, her included, shifts up or down. Every 1% of HP change per character will result in one fanfare stack. These HP changes will be activated by healing, direct damage taking, self damage from reactions, HP consumptions via talent, so not just Furina, but Cookie, Novilet, Risley, Hutao, etc. Even food can help stack fanfare points. Every fanfare point will amount to a damage percentage buff and incoming healing bonus buff to the entire team. Now the scaling is really interesting as it will continuously and linearly scale up with talent levels making the extra investments very worth it and it's also a good use of a crown. To put this buff into perspective, it has a 300 stack limit at C0 and at talent level 9 each fanfare is 0.23% damage increase, so maxing it out results in a very nice 69% damage buff to the entire team. That is about double of what a 900 elemental mastery Kazua can buff and it's not just for one or two elements. It's for everything and the entire party. Now the catch and the mistake that many will make is that comparing an instant damage buff to one that slowly ramps up is a total mistake. To reach those 300 fanfare points, we need the HP to shift for 300% total. That is three characters going from 100 to zero. Her fanfare accumulation will take time and highly depends on the team she is in. Her own HP consumptions from the skill will stop fanfare points, but not that fast. A small tip here is that you can tell when her fanfare point reach 100, 200 and 300 by this little graphic on the bottom of the screen. I will talk about teams later, but since we are talking about fanfare points, I want you to keep in mind that healers are basically a must for a Furina team, as without them, she not only has a hard time stacking her fanfare points, but also her skill will stop draining HP to characters that are at or below 50% HP. That will translate into a decent first rotation and a second one that will not buff anything at all. Plus. Her skill has an extra multiplier that increases its damage for each character that is above 50% HP. But now you're thinking, hey, she can also heal with her skill, right? Yes, but it's gonna waste a lot of time where you could be doing damage instead. Plus, it only heals the active character. Now to finish your kit, let's briefly talk about Ascension passives. Ascension 1, when the active character receives overflowing healing, so it gets healed further after being full HP, Furina will heal a party member for 2% of their max HP every 2 seconds for 4 seconds. An okay shop to teams that can only heal the active party member. And Ascension 4, every 1000 max HP of Furina, her skill is improved, in damage for the trio and healing for the solo, up to a cap of 40,000 max HP. Now briefly, before moving away, the talent priority is going to be about equal for burst and skill, but I would incentivize the burst to be maxed out first, as it will increase the amount of damage given to everyone, herself included. The normal attacks can be left at level 1. That was a lot to digest, wasn't it? And believe me, her descriptions are not the easiest thing to navigate. But here's something really really easy, her artifact options. Golden troop. Okay, let's move on. No, I'm kidding, but yes, you should use Golden Troop, it's just too strong for her to skip. 
If you didn't farm for it or you still don't have a good set, there is a case for full tenacity if your team has attack scalers or for 2 piece 2 piece options that include ER, HP, Hydro damage and skill damage. As far as stats, you're looking at something a bit unique. Firstly, she wants to absolutely not skip her burst and have it on all the time to buff your team and give a meaning to all the HP consumptions and healing that will happen. This to say that you need enough energy recharge over anything else. So here's a chart with all the energy recharge you might need in different teams. It will likely result in using an ER sense with crit or HP weapons and HP sense with ER weapons, but it really depends. Now for the other stats, HP up to her ascension 4 max of 40k gives you the most value and yes, it's even better than crit. So your priority is going to be energy recharge, then HP percentage up to 40k, crit rate and crit damage, and then again any sort of HP. This will result in her main stats being usually sense on ER or HP, goblet on HP or hydro, HP is on average better than hydro damage unless stacking a very high amount of HP buffs and stats, but still you should pick your goblet depending on your substats. Circlet is crit rate or crit damage, HP is usable but not the best. The assumptions for these stats are that you're using a golden troop set. What happens for Furina is that she stacks a lot of damage percentage, making HP a lot more valuable than it usually is for HP skillers. Lastly, keep in mind that attack does basically nothing for Furina before C6. Now for the weapons, I calculated two scenarios, one where 130% ER is necessary and another, probably the most common, for the 180 ER requirement. You can see the various weapons and in the middle of their chart, which combination of sense and goblet was used. Let's take an example. For the 180 energy recharge requirement, the R5 Festering Desire, providing already a very good amount of energy recharge, is going to have an easy time reaching this high into the cogs. But as you can see, on average, an HP sense plus HP goblet Festering Desire is about 5% better than one with HP sense and Hydro Goblet. Now a few words on some options, just to make sure they're clear enough. Harbinger of Dawn is a bit misleading because it provides a lot of crit, but it only works in certain teams that can keep food in HP up basically all the time. Wolf Fang might be picked up by many, but you can only get a couple stacks during her brief on-field time, and it will not refresh when off-field. EM options or EM share options like the key and sub food can have a much higher value, but only in certain particular teams. Lastly, keep in mind that generally you will want to avoid anything attack and probably with high base attack. She has some incredibly strong free-to-play options and I would not look further than Fluvre or, if available, Festering Desire. Her 5-star gives a ton of extra stats but needs to be backed up by an energy recharge sense pretty much always. Now, before moving to the teams, it's time to briefly address something, and that is the fact that thanks to Furina's abilities, the Marachosi Hunter set can now be used on multiple characters that previously didn't have a way to shift their HP constantly. The set is really really strong, providing 15% normal and charge attack damage and 36% crit rate when fully stacked. Secondly, the possible large amount of damage percentage provided by Furina, either with her constellations or with fast ways to shift HP for your party, might see stats rise up in value compared to others. For example, an attack scaler given lots of damage percentage and high crit might prefer having a higher amount of attack in their builds, compared to crit or elemental damage. This however highly depends on the character and how fast Furina can actually provide the fanfare stacks. I would recommend always using a calculator if you're seeking the exact answer. Going back to Manu C, it is now something that characters like Wanderer, Yomiya, Noel, Hu Tao, Ningguang, Yanfei, Klee and honestly many more can, can use fairly well when paired with Furina. It's going to take some time for the TC and general community to explore every possibility, but let's try to address a few guidelines when building a Furina team. So that even if in this guide you don't find the precise composition you were looking for, you still have the knowledge necessary to build it on your own. The first main point to consider is that she is going to consume a lot of HP to every single party member. Plus, she needs them to always be above 50% HP to keep her kit going, meaning that a healer is basically mandatory. Choosing the right one is very important, as especially lately, the meta often shifted towards greedier supports that provided little heals, but great buffs, utility or damage. Cook and Bennett are great examples of this. These units are not as good with Furina, as they would need to cycle around the team to heal everyone. Characters that have means to heal the entire party instead have a much higher value. For context, remember that Furina's trio will consume 50% HP to every party member, her included in around 20 seconds. Let's look at which healer can or cannot cover that huge HP cost. Let's start with the cryo healers first. Charlotte is releasing with Furina and is under her banner. 
She heals in AoE with her burst and has further healing for the on-field character. She is also going to be healing even more when activating her C1, C3 and C6. She can hold multiple sets, useful weapons like Trillian Tails, but has a very high cost burst that gets alleviated by her C4. Mika is actually starting to make more sense with Furina even outside of his C6 and physical support role. He can buff the on-field character with tons of attack speed, heal in AoE and generally has an easier time getting his burst back. Lastly, Yuna is generally not the greatest teammate for Furina, the healing is not super high and is not AoE, while Chi Chi heals a ton but has energy issues, cooldown issues and no easy access to AoE heals. For Animo, Jin and Sayu are amazing, they can heal the entire party on cast, hold the VV set, and Jin also has some utility in her constellations. They both, however, also require a good amount of energy recharge to cover their AD energy cost. The enjoy healers have Baiju, another high energy requirement healer that also provides a pseudo shield but has a very strong AoE heal tied to his skill instead. He can further heal the party and alleviate his energy cost via Prototype Ember. Then we have Yao Yao, an absolute powerhouse in terms of healing. Her constellations are not mandatory but pretty good, with extra danger damage, stamina, energy and even more healing. For Geo please don't consider Goro's he 4 and we will talk about Noel in a second. Haijo has Kokomi and Barbara, actually both pretty okay, but Kokomi needs to stay on field for AoE healing, which is not always a downside and a team around her with Furina can honestly be considered. Barbara has a nice time in the healing department, but doesn't provide that much else. We are left with the last two, Cookie and Bennett. Now, for how good they are, I'll be honest and say that their value is so high in the right teams that not working with Furina is fine even in her teams. The only problem is having to shift between teammates for healing, or honestly, bring another healer along. And that was everyone, I think. Teams, let's go by archetype. Danger teams first, because honestly I don't like them too much with Furina. And the reason why is that yes, she's Hydro, and yes, Hydro and Dendro are best friends forever, but her mechanics and buffs really don't synergize too well. First of all, her party damage buff does not increase the damage of any danger reaction except aggravate and spread. So Nilo Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and I guess Burgeon teams, all okay because she's still a good unit, still applies a decent amount of Hydro, but the synergy of her kit is not there. Plus, in some teams, there are already issues with reaction self-damage, and while that helps stacking funfair points, it also calls for even more healing. I can see some Nilo team working fine, as they kind of lack Hydro options that have AoE, plus she will still buff Nahida quite a bit, but probably not doing much for the rest. Hyperbloom teams also have a hard time slotting the extra healer and don't have that many options. Again, you can try them, you will do fine, but you're not using her buffs optimally. Quicken teams will become Quick Bloom, which is Hyperbloom with good Quicken uptime, and do fairly well, honestly. Next up, Fritz teams like Ayaka Fritz or even Ganyu, Rosaria, Keia can actually really enjoy Furina as her trio does fairly okay in AoE scenarios. With some grouping, that would be ideal, but unfortunately, one slot will always be a full healer, and Fritz teams tend to bring two cryo units for resonance and energy. Thankfully, most cryo, animo, and hydro healers mentioned earlier do fairly well here. Reverse vape teams are going to be very popular, especially among the Huta communities as for a long time they seeked an upgrade for their favorite character. Marichu C was not great on its own, but now with Furina are things different? Well, yes and no. Hutao wants to be below 50% HP while Furina doesn't want that. She wants you to shift HP, but always above 50%. The thing is, Hutao in the end gets way way more out of using Furina and being above 50% than not. In a sense, she's similar to Bennett. You're making your Hutao stronger, but not really synergizing well enough. In the case of Furina, you're getting a strong Hydro Fielder that can be coupled with Zinchu or Yelan to add the Hydro Resonance, and she enjoys that as well. You're getting tons of damage buffs, and at this point, slotting a healer is totally okay. The last slot could be Bennett, actually, with a rotation that accommodates healing multiple characters. I know, I don't like it either, but it's pretty good. It's also okay to go for Jin or Sayu, or honestly, basically any AoE healer. Hutao is still working well. Tapping into a fantastic vape up time and getting lots of buffs. At this point, I'd say that Furina is a good substitute to one of the Hydro used in the usual double Hydro teams, as long as a healer is present. Now, this can be applied to many other pyro damage dealers to create teams that can use Furina and sustain the pyro with another Hydro unit. Clay, Delu, Kiyomiya can all do this and can choose different healers or other teammates depending on what they need. For example, Yomiya can use Mika for the extra attack speed. 
Fontaine damage dealers like Novilet and Risley are obviously incredibly good with her. Novilet without C1 doesn't get access to his maximum ascension 1 passive, but it's still a totally worth pair. Line is the only one that doesn't really appreciate her as he really dislikes Hydro units that end up disabling his passives. And honestly, any carry that can accommodate a Hydro unit and a healer will do very fine and can possibly use Mare Chussi. That's why you will see things like Noel, a strong on-field healer that also has a shield and can try the units like Yelan and Zinchu, Wanderer and Yoimiya teams that can use Mika and Furina as supports, or Mono Hydro teams with drivers like Okomi or even Barbara. Also Xiao looks like he can totally use Furina to a very good degree. Heck, even Eula or Dia can make room for her. One video is not enough to name that all, but I've tried to give you a few points and examples that will help you build a team on your own. In the upcoming days, I will make sure to upload more Furina videos as I test new teams and give you more cool ideas. Now it's time to talk about constellations. C1 is 150 fanfare points upon casting the burst and it increased to the limit of 100. So a portion of her buff is guaranteed and given to you right away. It ties well with the next, which is C2. Now her fanfare gain is increased by 250%, making it extremely easy to max out and she can even do it herself with her drain in around 6 seconds. On top of it, she also gets increased max HP for each fanfare point, a whopping maximum total of 140% HP. C3 is burst level, tapping on the extra multipliers to her fanfare points, it will result in an extra 24% damage for the entire party when at max fanfare. C4 is 4 energy every 5 seconds, helping out with the energy requirements, and C5 is skill level, just more damage on the trio and healing on the solo. C6 is a long story, but long story short, when she uses her skill for 10 seconds, normal charge and a plunge attack, become hydro infused and do extra damage based on her HP. If Ujan lined, every 1 second she heals the party based on her HP. If Newman lined, her attacks do even more damage based on her HP, and every hit will consume 1% of the each party member's HP. This effect can only be triggered for 7 attacks. This constellation is basically a quick high damage window that can also be used to fully heal the party. It slightly changes your rotation and build, with Marecho C and Hydro Goblets being more useful. Also tapping into a split scaling with attack. And that was everything I had to share about Forina for now. Stay tuned for more videos in the next few days as I will explore particular teams and combos that she can use. This was a lot of work and my longest video so far, so any engagement will be highly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.